Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, my name is Lucy and I am an iOS developer on AppDev. Uh, so today I will be giving a guest lecture on the topics of persistence and SnapKit. Uh, so as you guys start to work on your final projects, uh, persistence may be a particularly useful uh, concept to understand and utilize. So you might find this lecture to be um, an important one. So for logistics, we want to quickly announce that the iOS final project has been released and it will be due on May 15th at 11.59 p.m. Uh, there will be no extensions for this project and you are also not allowed to use any drops. If you have not received an email from us regarding your project idea after submitting the project idea form, please make a private post to us on Piazza and we will get back to you. Otherwise, if you did not submit a project idea, you should just be building the New York Times app for your final project. So on to the topic of persistence. Um, we will start off by talking about what we mean when we actually talk about data persistence in applications. So simply put, persistence is basically um, being able to save application data to the disk so that even when a user terminates or refreshes your app, the data on your app will still be stored and saved and it won't just disappear. So this may be an obvious question to answer, but why do we want to persist application data? Well, obviously a big part of any app is the uh, dynamic data that we render and display for users to see and interact with. For example, when we look at transit and eatery, we see that almost everything on the screen is data driven. Some of this data, for example, the bus routes and the open eateries are saved in databases that we retrieve through network calls. However, there are also other smaller pieces of data that we can just store locally without the need of a database. So how do we actually achieve persistence in iOS? Well, one of the main ways that we can do this is through user defaults and codable. Um, and that's what we're gonna be spending most of our time today talking about. There are also other ways to persist data through uh, cloud data, core data, and UI document, um, which are basically more complex frameworks that Apple provides developers to handle data storage. Um, but because they're more complex, uh, we're not going to be going over that today. Um, you could feel free to do more research on your own time. So um, user defaults is one of the main methods that we use to achieve lightweight persistence in our apps. Um, it is basically a plist file in your app's package that uh, you can use to set and get simple pieces of data. Um, and in general, we can think about this plist file as a dictionary or kind of a key value store. Uh, so this is kind of uh, what a plist file looks like. Um, basically, you have like a key and there's like a type for the value and then there's like the value associated with the key. Um, and this basically, you know, looks very similar to a dictionary, which you have had experience uh, working with before. Um, so you, hear, you see here, you know, you have a dictionary um, with like uh, three keys and three values associated with the keys. And when you interact with this dictionary, you can, you know, access values within the dictionary and you can also update values within the dictionary. Uh, so when do we actually use user defaults? Well, you know, it's really meant to be used as um, a means of achieving lightweight persistence for if you want to store small pieces of data. Um, and we define that to be less than one megabyte in size. So things like booleans, strings, dates, etc., can be easily stored. However, you probably don't want to be storing large objects like images or like big arrays in user defaults. And this is because um, since the plist file is stored as part of your app package, uh, it can significantly slow down your launch time if the um, file is too large. So some information that you, some examples of information that you might want to store in user defaults include things like, you know, application settings or application flags, or maybe like small pieces of user information and preferences, or, you know, like indicators for how your app should behave at startup. Um, and, you know, in general, you can store a wide variety of data types in user defaults, including basic data types like booleans, floats, doubles, integers, and strings. Um, but you can also store more complex data types like URLs, arrays, and dictionaries. 
So some examples of how uh, AppDev uh, uses uh, user defaults in our apps include um, in, in our apps like Transit and Eatery. So uh, things like favorite destinations and recent searches in Transit or um, selected filters and viewing modes in Eatery. And the idea is that, you know, uh, even when these apps are terminated, um, you know, when you like a user might do a double click and then swipe up on the app, um, even when they do that, when the user then reopens the app, we can still um, know things like which destinations a user has favorited and, you know, if they're viewing campus eateries or college town eateries on, on the app. Um, so now that you know a little bit about user defaults, how do we actually use it in our apps? Uh, well, in terms of user defaults, we will go over how we initially set up user defaults and default values, how we store and retrieve data, and how we can create custom classes to store um, more complex and custom, custom data to our app. Uh, so to set up user defaults, you will instantiate the user defaults in the app.get.swift file. Um, and then you can also register some default values for keys and values in your user defaults. Um, so here we see that we wrote let user defaults is equal to user default.standard. That's how we initialize uh, user defaults. And then we are registering uh, three keys, like three key values within our user default. So we're saying like, oh, we're going to default Boolean key to false, default um, default string to string key, and then also uh, an empty integer array to the integer array key. So then to store data in user defaults, you want to use the set syntax where you basically give a value and you set that for the key of a given name. So here are some examples with uh, more simple types like strings and ints um, and then more complex types like dates. Um, so it's pretty simple. You just have to uh, use the syntax. So for example, you say like user defaults dot set Lucy for the key of name. Um, yeah. Uh, so after we have data stored in user defaults, we can then access that data by using a get syntax that is specified by the value type that we expect to get back. So for example, if we want to get the user's name back, we know that it is a string. So the function that we use is user defaults.string for key. Um, similarly, for age, we use the function user defaults.integer for key because we know that integer that age will be an integer. Um, and here we use if let when retrieving values from user defaults because there is a chance that there is in fact no value for our specified key in user defaults. So if we don't unwrap our value, then we might get thrown an optional error in the case that like, um, you know, the thing that we get back for, you know, uh, user defaults string for key name is actually like uh, an optional, is actually a nil. Um, Um, but there's also a generic get method in user defaults called user defaults dot value for key. Um, and so when we use this, um, the way we handle it is slightly different than in the previous examples because uh, dot value for key returns data in the type of any. Um, so to actually use a value that we get back, we have to first cast it as a type that we expect it to be. Um, so for example, if we want to access the name value in user defaults using um, uh, user defaults dot value for key, then we have to first cast it as a string because we know that you know name is of type string. So, you know, what we actually want to save custom objects to user defaults, you know, for example, we might want to, uh, we might have in our code a custom object called song that we created, you know, and we might want to save that song into user defaults. Um, how do we actually do that? Well, um, the solution is pretty simple. We basically want to um, add this part of the code that makes your class conform to the types of NS object and codable. So that later we can encode and decode our object um, as a data object to be stored in user defaults. Um, so here you see we just added the colon NS object uh, comma codable to our class of song. 
Uh, so then from here, we basically approach registering, storing, and accessing our custom object in user defaults in a way very similar to how we did before with strings and integers. The only difference is that instead of directly setting and getting values from user defaults, we have to first now encode our object into a data object before we store it using set, and then later we have to first decode our data object into our custom object before we can access it in user defaults. Um, so here you see that we have registered our song object as um, a dummy data object uh, first, and then later we use an encoder to encode our song before putting it into user defaults under song key. And then we also use a decoder to decode our data before using it as a song object. Um, and this is just like the syntax, you can just take a look. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so now we will move into a demo to show you how to put everything that we just talked about into practice. Um, okay, so for our demo today, we will be building uh, a pretty simple app uh, that basically keeps track of basic user profile information and then also app preferences within our app. Um, so earlier I did mention that user defaults is especially great for storing small pieces of data such as user info and application settings and flags. So in this demo app today, um, we're going to be going over what that looks like um, by building a settings page where um, the information can be saved into user defaults. So first we will just run this app and take a look at what it looks like. Um, and you can see it's you know pretty simple. So on the first screen, we basically have a home page that might look something similar to what you would see in a lot of other apps that keep user profiles. And here it just displays two things. It displays uh, the user information and it also displays song information. Uh, for now, we have uh, no information saved for our user or our song. So um, these are just like dummy data. And over here, we have this label that indicates when our um, app data has been last updated. Um, and this is also a dummy value for now that is set to be the current time. And when you click on this edit button, it takes you into a separate settings page where our user can then update our um, app data and also change some settings within the app. Uh, so the first and easiest thing to do um, that we're going to do is to basically update our user profile um, by saving inputs into uh, these three fields. Um, and so since these are all string types, saving and retrieving these values will be very simple. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is basically um, we will navigate to this a Swift file called settings view controller that controls the setting page. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to instantiate user defaults here um, before the uh, view did load function. And so we do that by saying let user defaults equals to user defaults dot standard. Um, and so now we just want to update the functionality of our save button um, in this function called save profile, um, which is all the way down here. So this is a function that will be called every time the user clicks on this first button. Um, and so, you know, to, to save these values, and so we just want to save. Uh, so to save these values, uh, we can just do that by first unwrapping the strings in these three text fields using the if let syntax. Um, so we say if let name text equals name text field dot text. Let uh, username text is equals to user name text field dot text let email text equals email text field dot text um, so if our users 
if our user has in fact inputted values for every one of these three fields, then we can just save these values into user defaults um, under the key names that we define. And we do this by using the user defaults dot set syntax. Um, and it's pretty simple. So we just say user defaults dot set name text. Um, and we save that for key name key. And then we basically do the same thing for our other two text values. So we say set the username text to be username key. And we set the email text for the key email key. So um, now basically what happens is every time this function is called, um, so now every time this function is called, these three text field values would be saved into our user defaults under these key names that we defined. And uh, the last thing that we want to do is we want to keep track of when was the last time uh, data within our app was saved and updated. Um, so we can do that by updating the uh, last updated key within user defaults. So we can just say defaults.set date for key um, last updated key. So here, when we say um, date, it basically creates a new date object, which will give us the current day and time. Um, and we will save that under this key, last updated key. The idea is that now after a user clicks save, we will have all this information saved in user defaults, and then we can use those values to populate the previous screen in this home page. Um, but the problem is, you know, before our user actually inputs these field values and then click on save, we actually don't have, you know, any values in our user defaults for the keys of main key, username key, email key, and last updated key. And, you know, it's not really that big of a deal, but we do want to be more safe by first registering default values for these keys in our appdelegate.swift file. So to do that, we want to go into appdelegate.swift. And under this did finish launching with options function, we want to first instantiate the user defaults. So we do that like how we did earlier, and we say let user defaults equals to user defaults dot standard. And then we want to register some default values for the keys that we defined earlier. And we can do that using the register function. So we can say user defaults dot register um, defaults. Um, so we can say name. Oh, let's set that to a dummy value of say John Smith. Um, let's say username. We can set that to be John Smith. And also uh, email to johnsmith at gmail.com. And let's just say our last updated, the default will be set to this today's date, like this current date. Um, so this just makes it so that, you know, even before a user actually saves any new values to our app, we at least know there are some default values associated with our keys inside user defaults. So now let's just rerun our app. So what we've done earlier is we registered some default values for our user in user default um, inside of app delegate. And we also wrote a function that um, let us save new values every time a user clicks on uh, the save button on the settings page. But what we actually want to do is we want to then use those values inside of user defaults and display and display that in our home page here. So we can do that by going into our view controller and going into this function called um, fill user label values. And we want to update that so that we are actually setting these text values using what we get from user defaults. So right now I've 
uh, manually set them to be dummy values, name, username, but we actually want to use uh, we actually want to retrieve from user defaults for this user defaults. So we say let user defaults equals user defaults dot standard, and then from there inside of this function uh, fill user label values, we just want to write if let name equals user defaults dot string for key. Uh, name key and then we want to do this for all four of our key values so we say if let username uh, equals user defaults dot string for username key and we do this for email so we say let email for key email key um, and last updated um, equals users dot dot value for key last updated key uh, and since we're using this dot value function it actually returns in any type so we want to uh, typecast it as a date object because we know it is um, a date object. Um, so this just says that if we um, if user defaults dot string for key returns non nil types, then we can use these values um, and render that in our home screen. So we say name label dot text equals name user name label dot text equals username email label dot text equals use equals email and we say last updated label dot text is equal to last updated and we concatenate that with the value we get back from user defaults. Um, and so basically we want to do the same thing, but we want to do that for the settings page here because right now these have no values, but ideally we want to populate these as well with values in values from our user defaults. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, go into settings view controller and edit this function called set profile label text. So it's going to be very similar, but with some uh, small differences. So we don't need this last updated and uh, we want to be updating these text fields and they're called name label text field, username label text field, email or name text field, username text field, email text field. Text field. Well, I think I name text field. Oh, I think I. Oh, I think I re. I think I. Had a typo. User name text field. Okay. Um. So now instead of manually setting our uh, label text to dummy values, we are actually retrieving them from user defaults. Um. So now we can just rerun our app and see what it looks like. Uh, 
Um, so here we see that, in fact, our label values have now been changed to be um, the default values that we assigned earlier in appdelegate.swift here. Um, also, I realized um, I named the keys wrong earlier, so I fixed that to be of the correct uh, value. Um, yeah, so now uh, we see too that if we navigate to our settings page and say we like update these values, so say I make it Lucy Shu, Lucy Shu, um, Lucy Shu at gmail.com, and we click save. Now we go back to the home page. This value will also, these values will also be changed. Um, and even if we, you know, close our app, um, even if we close our app like this, um, and then we reopen it, and we reopen it, these values will still persist uh, in our app. Um, so, yeah, so one thing that I want to mention is that up until now, um, we have been using string types every time we, um, every time we indicate the keys that we are accessing in user default. Now, that's not always the best thing to do because it is very susceptible to typos and errors. Um, so for example, we see that like we use these keys multiple times throughout our code, right? We use it here, uh, we use it here, um, we use it throughout our code. And if we have a more complex name or we just call it more often, just mistyping this key name once can cause errors in our app. So usually it's good practice to save these key names as variables. And so we will do that by saving it in uh, this constants file that I created under this folder called supporting that I also created. Um, so what we're going to do is basically create a struct called constants and uh, struct user default, and then we will basically save all those strings as variables inside of the struct. So we can say static let name equals name key, static let username equals user name key, static let email equals uh, email key, static let last updated equals last updated key. Um, so this way we can just go back and basically everywhere that uh, these keys were used, we will replace it with constants.userdefaults.name or dot uh, these variable names. So we can say constants.userdefaults.name and we can say dot username and we can also say dot email and we can say oh uh, so dot last updated um, and we can also do that here constants dot User defaults dot name. Uh, we can do that here. Username. And then here. Oh. Make this dot email. And for key last updated. Um, we also get rid of this. Um, and we also want to do that here in the settings view controller. So name, uh, username, and this is for email. And we also want to do that here, name, username, uh, email, and last updated. Um, so if we rerun our app, it should still function the same because we basically just replace all of our strings with the variable names associated with the with the strings.
Um, so in fact, we see that it all still acts the same. Um, so something else that you might want to store in user defaults um, are the system preferences of your user regarding your app. So for example, you probably know of many apps that have things like light modes and dark modes, and you know you want to be able to remember what a user actually indicated they want to see so that you can render the app appropriately based on um, their preferred settings. And so we will do something like that here as well um, by setting the color theme of our app. So if you click through these colors on the bottom, you see that it will update the colors of the buttons of our app. And so what we want to do here is we want to be able to save the color that was selected by our user so that every time we come back to this app, we can show the color that was selected by them. And um, we can do that basically in the same way that we did earlier with setting a value in user defaults. And so right now, this entire thing is uh, rendered in a collection view. Um, and every time some every time one of these colors uh, is selected, we set the selected color to be the selected color. Um, and so what we want to do is save the index of that color into user defaults. And we can do that in this save settings function. Um, and it's pretty simple. Uh, we just want to say let index equal to color items. Uh, color items is the array of all the colors that um, I specified up top here. So what I would do is say let index equals color items index of um, uh, index of um, selected color. And then I want to save this into my user defaults. And so I would do that by saying, uh, so I would do that by saying user defaults dot set index for key. Um, and so I'm going to make a new variable in our constants.userDefaults for this key name. For now, I'll call it constants.userDefaults.color.color. .color. Um, I think it's the first index. Uh, so I go into my constants and say static let color equals color key. Okay, so here we see that we have saved the index uh, into user defaults under uh, the color key. Um, so now what we want to do is do the same thing that we did earlier, where we go into app delegate.swift and we can indicate uh, a default value for uh, the color as well. So we say constant user defaults dot color, um, and we can just say that to be to that zero for now. Um, so now we actually want to use this saved color every time we're rendering the color for, you know, like our buttons or for, you know, these background colors for our images. So for this screen, the way we want to do that is we want to go into uh, settings view controller and we want to go into this function called uh, set color and basically we want to retrieve uh, the color that was saved in user defaults and then use that to actually set the colors of these buttons. So we can just say let color index equals user defaults dot um, uh, integer because we know it's an integer for key constant dot user defaults dot uh, color. And then we want to basically set each of these button colors to be equal to this color index in our color items array. So we say, um, uh, so I think the buttons are called, so save profile button. Uh, so we can say save profile button dot background color equals color items at this color index and we want to do the same thing for the other three buttons.
um, save song button, save setting button. Uh, so now we rerun this app. We see, um, so now we go to the settings and we change up the colors. So say we choose this color and we click save. Then if we close this app, uh, now we close this app and we go back to it, you see that this color is still saved. Uh, so now if you go back and then you click back in, the color will still be saved. Um, so now what about like the color of these two? Well, we'll do something very, very similar in our view controller. Uh, so I'm just going to um, copy what I had. I'm going to copy what I had here and go into view controller. And inside of this function, fill app color. Um, so before I had it manually set to be the silver color, but now we want to be able to use a value from our user defaults. So we take the color index and we set our photo image view background color to be color uh, items at color index. And we do the same for the song image view. Uh, so now if we rerun this app, we will see that the background color has in fact changed. So if you go back to um, your settings, you can change. So say you select this color and you save it. Then when you go back, it will be this color. So these colors will be saved. Um, okay, so now the very last thing that we're going to do for this demo is um, we're going to save um, a song object into uh, user defaults. And this is where we would uh, do what we talked about earlier with creating custom classes um, because we have um, a custom song object that we want to save into uh, user defaults. Um, so. Uh, right now in our code, we have a model for our song. Um, and so this is the model, it's a class song with name and artist. So um, the first thing that we wanna do is in order to be able to save the song into user defaults, we have to first make it conform to uh, NS object and codable. Uh, so after you do this, we want to update in our settings view controller this um, function save song that is called when we click on this save button. Uh, so like we did last time, we want to first unwrap the values in these two text fields. So we say if let song title equal to uh, song title text field dot text let song artist equal song artist text field dot text um, so this tells us if we have values in these two text fields then we want to use um, uh, those values to create a song object so then we say let uh, favorite song equals to song where name is the song title, artist is the song artist. So now we have this, you know, favorite song, right? We want to save this favorite song into um, our user defaults. And we can do that by saying, um, and this is what we went over earlier as well in our slides. So we say let encoder equals JSON encoder. 
and then we say if let encoded object equals try encoder dot encode um, song or encode favorite song. So if we can encode this song object, then we can set this into our user defaults, like using user defaults.set encoded object for key. Um, and let's just say it will be constant dot user defaults dot uh, favorite song. Um, so this is how we actually uh, save our, our song object into user defaults. First we have to encode it and then we set it in user defaults. Um, and so this is giving an error because we haven't actually defined this variable yet. So we'll just go into our constant and say static let uh, favorite song equals favorite song key. So this error should go away. Um, I think favorite, yeah. Um, so now that we have this, um, we should do what we did earlier as well, where we go into app delegate and we initialize a um, default value for our key. So we say constant user defaults dot um, favorite song and we can first in, uh, initialize it to be an empty data object. So now that we, you know, we have this default data object saved in a favorite song, and we also have the function written to be able to save a song, we want to use that uh, for when we actually display this song here. And to retrieve the value from user defaults, we go into view controller and we can uh, update this function called fill song label values. And so what we can do is, uh, you know, earlier we encoded our favorite song before we can set that in user defaults. Now we have to decode it before we can uh, use the song, uh, use the title and the artist labels from the song in our screen. So we say here, um, let decoder equals JSON decoder. Let, uh, favorite song equals user defaults dot data for key constants dot user defaults dot favorite song. Uh, then we'll say song is equal to try decoder dot decode we want to decode that as a song object from this favorite song. And so now, and so now we can set the um, title and the artist labels using uh, the title and the label from the song object. So now we can say uh, song title label dot text equals to song dot uh, name. Uh, song artist label dot text equals song dot artist. Oh, I think we want to unwrap it. So we say if let song equals try, then we use the values in the song.
okay. Um, and we basically, we can copy and paste this because we want to do the same thing for, uh, so we can just copy and paste this because we want to do the same thing for populating these two field values. And so we can do that in settings view controller in set song label text. Uh, yeah, so here I think this is song uh, title text field, song artist text field. So now let's run it. Um, so right now, because we uh, initially, uh, in our app delegate, we set our favorite song to be of basically like an empty data object, nothing will show up here. Um, but if you go into our settings page, and now if we update our favorite song here, so let's say we say song title is Single Ladies, and we say our artist is Beyonce, um, and then we click on save, then we can go back and see that uh, these these values are updated um, to be the song that we just saved earlier. Uh, so before I end this lecture, I just want to quickly mention a really neat CocoaPod that you can use called Snapkit, uh, which you can use to implement auto layout in your app. So um, up until now, you have been using uh, NS layout constraints to set, you know, like the top, bottom, leading, and trailing anchors for each of your views. Um, however, you might have noticed that this is extremely tedious and annoying to do because, you know, it's really long to write, um, and also like it's annoying to have to call stuff like uh, translates our resizing mask into constraints to false every single time you create a view. Uh, so Snapkit is uh, basically a pod that can simplify the entire process and allow you to write cleaner and shorter code um, that's actually more flexible with constraints. Um, so you know, for example, this might be what you know when you write. Uh, a constraint for, you know, something like a square image, this might be what you write. Um, you know, you write a top anchor, leading anchor, high anchor, width anchor, uh, but you can also write the same thing in a much shorter way using Snapkit. Um, so once you have the pod installed through CocoaPods, you just have to import Snapkit at the top of your Xcode file. And after that, you can just use this syntax to, um, again, set the leading anchors, height, width, and top anchors, but just in a cleaner, uh, shorter fashion. Um, so we will not be going through a demo to show you Snapkit, but feel free to look up documentation um, and use it in your final projects if you uh, would like to. And so the last thing that uh, I'm just going to mention before uh, we end this lecture is your action items. Uh, please make sure to work on your final projects. You are not allowed to use any drops um, and you're also not allowed to use any extension days. So uh, yeah, please work on that and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or need help.